Hello everyone, I'm Yu Zhang from UIUC. Uh, today I would like to introduce our work on minimally supervised categorization of text with metadata. So let's start from the introduction part. Our daily life is surrounded by text data, ranging from news articles to social media posts and scientific publications. Document categorization, which is a task to assign a label to each document, serves as a critical first step towards organizing, searching, and analyzing such data. We raise three examples here, GitHub repositories, Twitter posts, and Amazon reviews. Each of them have a topic label that we would like to predict. Also, document categorization is not restricted to topic labels. Many real applications such as sentiment analysis and location prediction can also be cast as a document categorization task. Although deep neural models equipped with word embeddings and pre-trained language models have achieved superior performance on document categorization, many existing studies are less concerned with two problems. The first one is the existence of metadata. Metadata is prevalent in many text sources, especially social media platforms. In our three examples, each GitHub repository or each tweet is associated with its creator information and several tags or hashtags. Each Amazon review also has its user and product information. Such metadata makes each document a complex object beyond plain text. So a natural question is how to leverage these heterogeneous signals in the categorization process. The second problem is label scarcity. Conventional supervised classification techniques such as CNN and BERT rely on sufficient labeled documents as training data. However, annotating enough training data is expensive in some real applications, especially in the domains like archive papers and GitHub repositories, which requires domain expertise. In these cases, it would be favorable to perform categorization using only a small set of labeled documents that an individual user can afford to provide. In recognition of these two concerns, we define our task as minimally supervised categorization of text with metadata. In order to effectively leverage multimodal signals and scarce label data jointly, in this paper we propose a unified embedding-based categorization framework. So we first propose a generative process to characterize relationships between words, documents, labels, and various metadata. Then, guided by the generative process, we design an embedding module that learns the embedding vectors of all elements via maximum likelihood estimation on the textual and the metadata statistics. And this embedding module is designed to deal with data heterogeneity. Still guided by the generative process, we design a generation module that synthesizes training samples with both text and metadata. And this module is designed to tackle supervision scarcity. Now I would like to introduce our proposed MetaCAD framework. The underlying model of our framework is a generative process shown in this figure. We can see two concepts here, global metadata and local metadata. Let me start by explaining these two concepts. In most cases, topic indicative metadata can be divided into two major categories according to their relationships with documents. The first one is global metadata, which causes the generation of documents. The semantics of a document is based on the semantics of its global metadata. For example, there first exists a user or a product, then some reviews are created by the user or for the product. From this perspective, users and products are both global. The second category is local metadata, which describes the overall idea of a document. The semantics of local metadata is based on the semantics of its associated document. From this perspective, tags and hashtags are local. We can also say the label is global and the words are local, although they are beyond our discussion of metadata. After defining global and local metadata, 
we can now illustrate our generative process. Here we use GitHub and Tweet as a specific example, where the global metadata is the user information and the local metadata is the tag information. Our generative process can be decomposed into four steps. Let us consider how humans write articles. In the first step, when a user decides to write down a document given a topic, he or she first has an overall idea on what to talk about. This overall idea can be represented as the document embedding ED. It should be close to both user embedding EU and label embedding EL. Inspired by the softmax function in word to vec we define the generation probability to be proportional to the exponential of the inner product. In the second step, given the overall idea, the author will write down words that are coherent with the entire document. To encourage such coherence, we also use a softmax function to define the conditional probability of the word given the document. In our third step, tags or other kinds of local metadata can be generated in a similar way given the document embedding. And in our last step, we aim to model the context information in a word sequence. Different from tags, words in text carry sequential information. And it is widely known that the embedding of a word is related to not only its global document representation, but also its local context. So inspired by the skip brand model, we assume contexts are generated by center words. From this perspective in our generative model, each word will have two embeddings. EW when W is viewed as a center word and E apostrophe W when W is a context word. Guided by this generative process, we can design our embedding learning module and training data generation module. In the embedding learning module, all embedding vectors are parameters of the generative process. Therefore, we can learn the embedding vectors through maximizing the likelihood of observing all text and metadata. And then in the training data generation module, since we have learned all the embeddings, then given a label L, we can generate documents, words, and tags according to the generative process. In this way, we have a large set of synthesized training data to augment the original real training data. We omit the mathematical details of these two modules. If you would like to know more details, please refer to our paper. After the embedding and generation steps, we have two things in our hands. First, we have a set of word embeddings which considers label and metadata information. Second, for each category, we have a small set of real training data and a large set of synthesized training data. Therefore, we can use both real and synthesized training data to train a text classifier by taking the pre-trained embeddings as input features. In this paper, we use the famous convolutional neural network architecture as our text classifier. Of course, it can be replaced by a more advanced architecture. After introducing our MetaCAD framework, I would like to show our experiment results. We use five datasets from three different domains in our experiments. In the GitHub domain, we have three datasets related to bioinformatics, artificial intelligence, and security, respectively. Each repository is mapped to a research paper. The research paper has a topic category, which is viewed as the label of the repository. The Amazon dataset is a large collection of product reviews. We select 10 product categories and sample 10,000 reviews from each category. The Twitter dataset is a collection of geotagged tweets. Each tweet in this dataset is linked with a POI, and the type of the linked POI is viewed as the category of the tweet. In we use 10 documents per class as our training data and all the remaining ones as our testing data. And you can see the dataset statistics and the category information here.
We evaluate the performance of MetaCAD against both text-based and graph-based benchmark approaches. For text-based baselines, we have fully supervised neural classifiers, including convolutional neural networks, hierarchical attention networks, and BERT. And semi-supervised or weakly supervised methods, including PTE, West class, and PCEM. For graph-based baselines, we have heterogeneous network embedding approaches, including eSIM, MetaPass2Vec, and Hint2Vec, and graph neural network models, including TextGCN. This table demonstrates the micro F1 scores of compared methods on the five datasets. We have three major observations here. First of all, MetaCAD consistently outperforms the baselines by a clear margin. And the second best approach is text GCN. However, on the two large datasets, it has excessive memory requirements. Second, the performance boost of MetaCAD is more significant on smaller datasets in comparison with text embedding baselines. In fact, when the corpus is small, Word2Vec cannot generate high-quality word embeddings. In this case, leveraging multimodal signals in representation learning becomes necessary. Third, despite its great success in supervised tasks, BERT is not suitable for our task without sufficient training data, probably because the language styles of GitHub and Twitter require strong supervision for fine-tuning. We propose two key modules, embedding and generation, in our framework. Now we examine their contributions through ablation studies. For embedding learning, we can generate two types of ablations. First, we can use heterogeneous network embedding techniques such as eSIM, MetaPass2Vec, and Hint2Vec to replace our generation-guided embedding module. Second, we can ignore one type of metadata, such as user, tag, and product, as well as context information. These bar charts demonstrate the micro F1 scores of these ablation versions and our full model, from which we can observe that, first, Modeling the relationships between metadata is more useful than focusing on higher order ones in our task. Second, all types of metadata have positive contributions, but their importance varies in different datasets. To examine the effect of training data generation, we use 0, 20, 100, 500, and 1000 synthesized documents for each category in our framework and check their performance. We find that when comparing 100 synthesized documents with zero synthesized ones, the average absolute improvement is 7.3%. This observation validates our claim that incorporating generated training data can boost classification performance. However, when the number of synthesized documents becomes larger, the performance fluctuation is quite subtle. Moreover, generating too many data will make the training process inefficient. To strike a good balance, we use 100 synthesized training data in our framework. According to the previous two slides, we already know that both embedding and generation modules are helpful when supervision is minimal. Now we examine their effects as real training data is increased. Three approaches are picked here, CNN, MetaPass2Vec and MetaCAT. This figure shows their performance with 10, 20, 50, and 100 real training samples per class on the two large datasets. We can see that the difference between MetaCAT and MetaPass2Vec is that MetaCAT generates training samples. By comparing their curves, we can see that training data generation is more powerful when supervision is weak. In contrast, the difference between MetaPass2Vec and CNN is that MetaPass2Vec embeds metadata. By comparing their curves, we can see that exploiting metadata in embedding is always helpful, no matter supervision is strong or weak. To conclude our paper, we formulate the problem of minimally supervised categorization of text with metadata. It poses two unique challenges, data heterogeneity and label scarcity. 
We propose a generative process to characterize relationships between words, documents, labels, and various metadata. We develop a novel framework MetaCat with an embedding module and a generation module to tackle the two challenges respectively. And we conduct extensive experiments to verify the contribution of both embedding and generation modules. For future work, it is interesting to study how to integrate different forms of supervision, for example, label documents and keywords. Also, it is interesting to explore how to generalize MetaCat to hierarchical text classification. That's all for my presentation. If you have questions, feel free to email us. For more details, please refer to our paper on archive. Thank you.